So if you're someone that's thinking about starting an online business, but you're not sure of exactly what step you need to take and how to get started in the best way possible, you need to watch this whole video from start to finish because I'm going to go through the top five things that I wish I knew when I started my online business many years ago because I would have gotten to the point of being able to travel the world to various different beautiful locations, quitting my full-time job, being able to make money even when I was on holiday a lot sooner. So as always, I don't want to waste any more time and I want to get right into it. If you enjoy any part of this video, don't forget to press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Hit the bell notification. Let's get right into it. All right. So one of the first things that I believe every single beginner needs to understand before they think about starting an online business is the actual definition of what a business is. And I know that most of you that are watching this right now are probably thinking, Sam, I already know what a business is. But the reason why I believe that this is important for me to talk talk about is because we live in a day and age right now where so many people go onto social media and they see people driving nice cars, wearing nice clothes, living in nice houses. And because of that, they now want to start an online business without fully understanding the foundations of what a business actually is. So a business has two main purposes. The first one is to provide value and a service or some sort of product to people. You need to understand that this is one of the main aims when it comes to building a business. You need to figure out exactly how you're going to provide value to someone in exchange for them to give you money, which actually now brings me on to the second purpose of starting a business, which is to generate a profit. Because so many beginners are solely focused on driving nice cars, wearing designer clothes, they completely neglect the fact that you need to make sure that you're focused on the other person, e.g. your customer, and you're also focused on generating an actual profit. This is something that I didn't fully understand before I started my business. I had to go through the process of figuring all of this out, and once I did, I was able to sell products that I knew people wanted to buy that was gonna help them out on a day-to-day -day basis, and because I was providing value to people and I was focused on generating a profit, that's when my business exploded and I was able to quit my full-time job. All right, so swiftly moving on to one of the second things that's very important that you need to do before starting your online business, which is that you need to research all of the available business models that are out there. And the reason why I say this is because when I started my first online business, which was an eBay business for anyone that doesn't know my backstory, when I was in college, I started selling stuff on eBay here and there. And over the years, I was able to grow it to the point where I started generating 40, 50, $60,000 every single month. And I was eventually able to make over a million dollars. And even though things worked out for me at the time, I didn't really spend that much time when it came to researching all of the available options that were out there. I just saw someone being successful with eBay and because of that, I decided to do it. So that's why nowadays I advise beginners to spend some time to research all of the different pros and cons, all of the benefits and disadvantages when it comes to all of the common business models that a beginner can easily start. And if you're wondering right now, but Sam, what are some of the common online businesses that would be perfect for a beginner? Well, you've got things like e-commerce. So for example, you can sell physical products on websites like eBay, Amazon, and you can also build your website using Shopify. You can also start a content-driven business on platforms like YouTube. Maybe if you wanna go down the route of blogging or even podcasting, or you can even start a serviced based business and become a freelancer or build some sort of agency where you're going to help someone obviously with a service. These are some of the main options that are out there that I've experienced anyway when it comes to beginners that are looking to get started making money online with an online business. So it's always advised to make sure that you spend some time to research all of the different factors that go into each of these different models so that you're going to be able to pick one that's going to be suitable for your own personal situation. And this now brings me on to the fourth thing that every single person out there that's watching this video needs to understand before they start an online business, which is that every single online business comes down to two different factors, which is physical or digital. And again, this is something that I didn't fully understand before I started my first ever online business. I always felt like if I started my eBay business, I essentially had a digital business because of course it was going to be ran on the internet when that isn't the case. In some ways it is a digital business because of course I didn't have a physical location that customers could come to in terms of a shop for them to buy the products that I was selling. But essentially the products that I was selling were physical products. And when it comes to digital and physical, there's so many different pros and cons that you need to fully understand. If someone had came to me before I started my first online business and laid out all of the different pros and cons when it came to selling physical items, then maybe I would have put a lot more energy when it came to building up a digital product business. But because I never had the awareness when it came to these two different options, I never really had a choice and I just picked 
the business model that was presented in front of me that again was an eBay business. And to show you exactly what I mean when I say that there's a difference between physical and digital, I'm just gonna run through some different business models just so that you have an understanding. So when it comes to physical based businesses, this is things like doing Amazon FBA, drop shipping, selling on eBay, and just e-commerce in general. Anytime that you're selling a product that's been manufactured and has to be sent to the customer, this is obviously going to be a physical based business. However, on the other hand, when it comes to a digital based business, this is things like content creation, doing affiliate marketing, blogging, freelancing, or any type of service-based business. Again, anytime that you're gonna be selling something that doesn't need to be manufactured with physical materials, this is normally gonna be a digital based business and again as I said earlier there's going to be different pros and cons when it comes to each of these different methods so I'm just going to go through one main pro and one main con with both a physical business and a digital business so let's start off with a physical one the main pro that I've noticed over my years of building this particular type of business is that it's easier to sell an actual item that people need and what I mean by this is that let's say for example you build a physical product business and you decide to start selling light bulbs if you're able to build your e-commerce business in the best possible way and you sell a product similar to this where people need it for them to be able to live their life on a day-to-day -day basis then this is going to be the best route when it comes to building a physical product business however if you compare this to most digital Digital items that are out there when it comes to selling things like ebooks online courses PDF documents people don't necessarily need them of course they may want them but it's more easier to sell a necessity when it comes to building a physical product business but when it comes to one of the main cons that I've personally noticed when it comes to running this type of business model which is that you're going to be fixed to one location even if you decide to go down the route of doing drop shipping of course you're going to be able to pick up your laptop and go anywhere that you want to but if you now decide that you want to scale up your drop shipping business and you need to start buying stock in bulk this is where you're now going to be fixed to one location and most drop shippers are going to have to go down this path if they want to take their dropshipping business to the next level. And I'm not saying that it's a terrible thing, but it's just something that you may want to think about if you are someone that wants to move around the world, travel to different places and not necessarily have to work from one specific location. But if we move on to a digital based business now, one of the main pros to this business model is that there's going to be low running cost, which means that you're going to be able to make more profit. As most of you already know, when it comes to producing the majority of the digital products that are out there, once you put the time, energy and money when it comes to producing the first one, even if you sell it 10 times, 100 times, 1000 times, you're not going to have to spend any more money because there's not going to be any manufacturing cost, which means that obviously you're going to be able to make more profit, which is a good thing. This is something that I love about running digital businesses because you're going to be able to generate a lot of profit and you're going to be able to move around the world in any way that you want to because you can run your digital based business from anywhere that you want to realistically all you need is a laptop however when it comes to one of the main cons that I've personally noticed which is a higher refund rate and you're probably thinking to yourself right now but Sam if I'm going to sell a high quality really good digital product then why should I expect to get a higher refund rate well I'm comparing this to physical products if you sell a really high quality physical product that people need and you also sell a really high quality digital product you can always expect to get a higher refund rate with the digital products and the reason for this is because it's easy when it comes to people receiving it once they buy it from you they're going to instantly get it Whatever it is, whether it's the link, whether it's access to whatever digital product you're selling, they're going to be able to get it within a matter of seconds, which means that if they decide to change their mind a couple seconds after they've got it, they know that they can easily request a refund. However, if someone's purchased a physical item from you and they've had to wait three days to receive it, most of the time your customers are not going to want to pack the item back up go to the post office for them to return it because it's going to waste their time. When it comes to digital products, they don't have to go to any post office. So this is definitely something you need to consider. But as I said, you're going to be making more profit. So this doesn't really matter, especially if you are selling a really good high quality digital item. All right. So moving on to one of the final things that I'm going to talk about in this video that I believe every single beginner needs to think about before they start their online business, which is that they need to make sure that they don't reinvent the wheel and follow a proven blueprint 
blueprint that's already working. When I first got into online business, this is another mistake that I personally made. I was trying to be unique. I was trying to be like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and Steve Jobs. And I was trying to create a business that was completely revolutionary when that isn't the best way to go, especially if you're just trying to make a modest living for you and your family. Now, I'm not saying that it's bad to be revolutionary and reinvent the wheel. You can do that if you want. You can build rockets and go to space or whatever you want to do. But if you're looking to start a simple online business where you're trying to generate 50k per month, 70k per month, it's always good to look at what someone else is doing and replicate their footsteps. And once I fully understood this concept of studying what's already working, that's when I switched up all of the products that I was selling and I was replicating what someone was doing on eBay, which again was the first online business that enabled me to quit my full-time job. At the time when I started this business, I was probably bringing in around, let's say $200 every single week, maybe less than that. But once I looked at what someone else was doing, I saw that they were making a million dollars a month. That's when I thought if they could make a million dollars a month by selling this particular product, then why can't I make $10,000 a month by selling the exact same products? So what I did is that I spent time studying their store, studying exactly how they listed their products, their images, their logo, the name of their store, and I somewhat replicated it in my own style. So I'm not saying that you should outright copy them. I'm not saying that you should copy the name of their business and copy everything they're doing, but you should use them as inspiration when it comes to you knowing exactly what's working so that you can end up not wasting your time, energy and money when it comes to starting your online business. And since learning this concept and successfully applying it to my online business, every single time that I start a brand new business nowadays, I do the exact same thing. Whether it's YouTube channels, whether it's blog websites, affiliate marketing businesses, digital products, whatever it is that I'm considering to start, I look at what someone else is doing successfully. And if I can see that they're getting a certain amount of traffic and they're generating a certain amount of sales, then it only makes sense for me to do the exact same thing and try and do it slightly better. Like for example, with one of the recent online businesses that I've built, I've been able to get to the point of going from $0 in revenue to over $100,000 in pure profit by studying one of my biggest competition and seeing exactly what they were doing and implementing it to my business. So if you wanna watch a completely free webinar where I break all of that down, all of my secrets, everything that I've learned to get to the point of making over $100,000, then you're gonna be able to watch that free webinar by clicking the first link in the description down below. The reason why I decided to do this webinar is because I believe it's very important as a beginner to make sure that you're educating yourself on the best steps to take, but you're also educating yourself and learning from someone that's actually done a business that you're considering to start yourself. So make sure you check out that free webinar by clicking the first link in the description down below. And if you also wanna watch another YouTube video that I made not too long ago, where I break down some other important things, some mindset things that you need to know as a beginner that's looking to get started when it comes to making money online, then you're gonna be able to watch that video by clicking the link right there. Make sure you check that out straight after this one because it's already helped out so many people and I'm sure that it's gonna help you out too. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Make sure you stay safe out there. Peace.